Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at the latest 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery from Big Battery. This is the OWL2 Max. It's rated for 228 amp hours. It's very similar to their original 170 amp hour OWL, which I reviewed several months ago. However, in addition to the upgraded storage capacity, you can also wire up to four of these in series where the original OWL was limited to just two. Additionally, this features a maximum charge and discharge of 175 amps and is good for up to 350 amps peak discharge for up to six seconds. Each time I look at one of these batteries, they seem to keep getting better and better. Uh, one thing that really stands out to me with this battery in terms of appearance is this beautiful brushed nickel colored enclosure they built for it. So obviously aesthetics doesn't affect performance, but this is one of the nicest looking they've had thus far in terms of appearance. So taking a look at the front here, we have the voltage indicator display. We have a power on and off button, very similar to the original OWL. And there's a sticker up here that says to make sure the power button is on while charging or discharging. I guess they've had some people yeah, trying to run it with the power button off, I don't know. On the top here, we've got some nice heavy duty nylon rope handles, which is good because this device weighs in around 52 pounds. On the left hand side near the top, we have the 175 amp Anderson connector. Same connector as the original OWL. You can see some blue LEDs blinking in there. I did charge this up fully for the capacity test already. Um, and I guess it's doing a little bit of balancing. So taking a look at the right hand side, we have a 300 amp fuse, very similar to the past few batteries we've tested from them. On the top here we have a QR code. I'm not sure if this is a serial number or maybe it's a model number. I don't think it's a serial number, but let's see what's in that QR code. So the QR code contains the date of manufacture, which was 521. And it says detection time of 526. I'm not sure what detection time is. Maybe that's when they've inspected it, quality control or something like that. I know they have changed their quality control procedure, so it wouldn't surprise me if they're now time stamping that. All right, so like most of our batteries, we're going to test this before we take it apart in case I break something. And I also wanted to point out that this battery actually includes the Anderson connector. So a lot of the batteries, you have to purchase the Anderson cable separately. This comes with a 175 amp Anderson plug. It's got the uh, ring terminals ready to go. And I think it's about a two or three foot cable. So it's pretty cool to see that included. I didn't know that was part of the deal until I got mine delivered and then went back and looked. All right, so I've got the battery hooked up here to my standard test up, and I'm trying to figure out how exactly I'm going to do this. Because this is a rather big battery, as the name suggests. Typically I like to settle for a 0.2C rate, however at 228 amp hours that comes out to 583 watts. And the incandescent light bulb where I have just doesn't go up that high and trying to figure out what to plug in to reach a constant uh, resistive load of 583 watts actually isn't that easy. So I think I'm just going to run this test with my little Lasco space heater here. Putting this on low will pull approximately 980 to 1000 watts. So I guess it'll be more of around a 0.4 C load test somewhere in that ballpark. But seeing as these are aluminum case prismatic lithium iron phosphate cells, they should be capable of more than a 0.2 C rate anyway. All right, so I've got my standard test set up here. The battery comes, the power comes out of the battery, it goes through a batrium shunt block. Uh, the positive is going through an HRC class T fuse for added safety, it goes into this inverter. The batrium is sending data to this display over here. So we have voltage, amperage, wattage, amp hours and watt hours. Going to go ahead and turn on the battery. So we're at 14.2 volts. I did charge this up like I said just a couple of hours ago and I used an iCharger X6 for that. I let it run until the BMS in here reached high voltage disconnect and shut down the charge. So it should be fully charged per the BMS inside. I'm gonna go ahead and switch on my inverter and the load. All right, so we settled around 960 watts here, which comes out to a 0.32 C load for this test, which is pretty good. So it's currently at 9.14 AM, and we'll leave this run until the BMS in this battery shuts us down. All right, so unfortunately I wasn't paying attention and I missed when this shut down. It was on about 20 minutes ago, so it did shut down recently. But either way, we're sitting at 233 amp hours, which is five more amp hours than what was advertised, so that's pretty good. All right, so now it's time for the funnest part. Open it up and see what's inside. So we've got uh, five screws on the top. They are number two Phillips. All right, so in the back here, we can see our Anderson 175 amp connector. As with their other batteries, it's all done with silicone insulated wire. And uh, silicone insulated wire has a 200 degrees Celsius insulation rating. And it is four gauge, which is great, since they were using six in some of their older batteries. And the wire is covered with this protective sheathing. 
Not really sure what material this is, but, but I've seen this used in other areas and other pieces of equipment where heat is present. My Ames inverter has a lot of the leads covered in the sheathing as well. So on the front there, you can see the power button. It's got a number of positive and negative leads coming off of it. And we also have the voltage display. You got one positive and negative. And moving over here, we can see the BMS. It is Battery Evo brand. Uh, it's very similar to what I've seen in the original OWL. And the balance lead has some sealant in there as well, which is fantastic, prevents it from backing out. So I did ask them what was up with this BMS because it says 150 amps. And as you know, this has a rating of 175 amps. And I think it might be the same BMS as my other battery. I'm not 100% sure, but they told me they use this in a variety of 4S configurations. And this can actually handle significantly more than 150 or 175 amps. So why they put 150 on there, I'm not sure, but they did reassure me that this BMS is properly rated for the 175 amps this battery is. So on the right hand side, we have our fuse panel here. To access that, we need to remove this uh, nylon strap, at least move it down to the side a little bit. And there are two Phillips screws that open this panel. And it looks like they are now using a clear plastic cover over the fuse, which I do like a little bit more than the original black cover they had on. So pull it off there. So it does appear to be a 300 amp fuse. I'm not really sure what brand or anything it is. It says ADM. So there are no washers or lock washers present, which is perfectly fine because they do have it secured in here with the seal and stuff to prevent the bolt from backing out. There are two, four, six Phillips screw holding this top lid on. So on the inside of this lid, we have a very thick, solid piece of foam padding. On the inside here, there's a nice plastic cover covering all of our terminals. So looking at the inside here, we have a PCB or printed circuit board that's connecting all of these cells in series. Uh, it does feel a little bit warm from our test there, but it's nothing bad whatsoever. Each screw here has a rubber insulated gasket on the top. Uh, there's a nut, there's a flat washer, and again they have this rubber thread lock stuff here uh, to prevent the nut from backing out, which is good. So one thing that makes this battery unique over the original OWL is that this has a fire extinguisher built in. So this says aerosol based fire extinguisher. Operating temperature is negative 50 to 90 degrees Celsius. So I'm not exactly sure how this works. Perhaps it's detecting smoke or maybe it's detecting heat. So these are all 10 millimeter nuts down here. And uh, I'm gonna pull those out with my insulated ratchet here and see if we can take a look at the cells inside. So on the bottom of this PCB, there is a temperature sensor that is taped down, which will go up against the cells. All right, these are supposed to be lichen cells. Uh, unfortunately, the QR codes, it looks like, have been scratched off. So, uh, yeah, I don't really know what's up with that. But they've really done a fantastic job of packing these guys in here. So there is foam padding on the side. Then the cells are mounted in this separate, uh, this separate white box that you see going around here. So there's foam padding on all four sides, very thick foam padding you can see down in there. Uh, there's foam padding on the bottom of the cell, between the cell and the second enclosure. Same on the top. And on the left and the right, they have a very thin piece of foam down in there as well. Additionally, they have this green, uh, which I believe is barley paper, between all of the cells to separate them in case the insulation gets punctured. All right, I was hoping to be able to remove some of these to take a look at them, but they are in there pretty good, so don't think that's going to happen. All right, guys, so this battery tested out great. It was above its rated capacity of 228 amp hours. It appeared to be all high quality components. It's well built. The cells are well padded, well insulated. It's in this nice, you know, welded steel enclosure. Um, the only thing that was a bit odd is that the QR codes were removed from those cells. There's not necessarily anything wrong with that. Uh, my personal assumption is that Big Battery is likely after the same cells on the market that most of us DIYers are buying. Uh, for example, the EVE 280 amp hours that I had purchased. That being said, Big Battery does say that they are brand new Lishin brand cells. And I could not locate any 228 amp hour Lishin batteries on Alibaba or anywhere like that. Uh, so one thing I did notice was that the terminal style, the placement of the QR code, and the event cover looked identical to the Cattle 310 amp hour batteries. The size wasn't there, right? So the, the cattle cells are quite a bit thicker than the cells that were in here. The cells that were in here are actually the same thickness as my EVE 230 amp hour cells, more on those soon, but the terminal style did not line up. So you know, I couldn't really find any cells that looked identical to what was in here. 
My personal opinion is that they are probably Lishan 230 amp hours. The big battery has derated to 228 amp hours, but regardless, they do test well above both of those figures. If big battery's watching this and you guys want to leave a comment as to what they actually are, feel free to do so. I'd really appreciate your input or anybody else's input who may be familiar with the cells that are in this battery. But all of that being said, this video was not sponsored. I purchased this battery myself. Big Battery had a discount code going on for a while that was 10% off plus free shipping. So I thought that was a good opportunity to check out some of the new items they have in their store. The only thing I'd have to recommend to uh, Big Battery, if, if you guys are watching, is I love these cables that you guys sell. The, the silicone wire, this high quality silicone wire with these ring terminals and whatnot. But I think it'd be great if you guys could include a 4 gauge version of this. Just have a separate item in the store or a separate variant where the customer can pick between a 6 or a 4 gauge. Um, I know personally if I were purchasing a cable, knowing these batteries are capable of 175 amps, I would probably go for the 4 gauge, you know, even if I wasn't going to go anywhere near 175 amps just for that added thickness of wire. If you like this video, please hit that like button. I'll leave a link to where you can purchase these batteries or find more information in the description if you are curious. Again, I did purchase this myself, so whenever you guys use those affiliate links, it does help me fund more purchases like this. If there are any batteries in particular you want to see me review, please feel free to leave those as well. I'm always looking for, you know, new batteries or new things for content on this channel. But other than that, thank you for watching.